What's going on, everybody? Bobby Fye here doing a first look because we don't have sheets today. I am going to be going through each game. We did already lose one game because of the weather. Uh, the Washington-Detroit game has been postponed. So we're going to move on, and we are going to talk about the next one. It's it's. I'm going to kind of go rapid fire through this as a first look. And early in the day, it's going to look a lot different than, different than later. Please join us for live at 6 Eastern. Please like and subscribe so you're alerted to the videos and when we go live. And make sure you're in our Discord, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with that said, let's jump right into it. All right. Or let, I'm going to skip a Washington Detroit. As I mentioned, they're, they're being postponed any second. Um, Orlando and Philadelphia. We just saw this matchup the other day. I happen to not really be on anybody from Orlando, but I can make a really good case for Suggs, Carter, and Bancaro. I actually think Suggs might be a better play by the end of the day because we have Jonathan Isaac now questionable, just opens up some more minutes. I do think they're going to get Suggs more run as time goes on. And uh, Bancaro, we just saw him put 49 up against this team the other day in a tough match, in a tough game. Orlando, when they're healthy, they play pretty well and they've been pretty competitive. Now, of course, they could always still get blown out tonight, but I do, I do think that if you're going to bet on them to hang in there, playing a Bancaro or a Wagner is not a bad idea. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. also fine. He's questionable. If those guys are out, we can re sort of reassess. But friends, Wagner, Paolo, and Suggs all may be interesting by the end of the day. As of right now, not, not overwhelmingly interested. Uh, right now on Philadelphia, look, you've got um, uh, Harden at a very reasonable price and you've got a very low owned Embiid, which we just saw the other night. Embiid put up like 40 in the first half of this matchup, 38 or something. And it didn't have much of a second half, but I do think that, uh, that getting some exposure to a low owned Embiid certainly might be interesting. And obviously I'm good with James Harden. Tobias Harris, for whatever reason, even when it's not in Orlando, always plays well against his former team. So you can make that play. Not one that's a priority for me right now. But I do think that getting some exposure to this game, which should be pretty low owned, um, is not a bad idea. And we we'll, might have to revisit that at six. Portland, Memphis, this feels like a great game environment. Kind of hard to find people pricing wise that make you feel great. I'll put Anthony Simons as one of them that I think is a really solid play in this matchup just because of the tempo, the pace and potentially some open looks uh, getting in there. Looks like Nurkic is going to play tonight. Looks like Hart's going to play tonight. I actually like the matchup for Hart in the up and down, but I don't know if on a big slate I'm going to end up getting there. Jeremy Grant also fits the sort of similarly good play to, to Anthony Simons. These guys play a ton of minutes. It's a fast-paced Memphis team that while they play good defense, they just the tempo is going to be enough to get some points. So I do have Simons and Grant as, as guys who I'm definitely interested in as of right now. And I, I, I will consider re-looking re at Nurkic a little bit later. Um, as of right now, I'm, I'm probably off of it, but, uh, as the price comes down, I'm going to, I'm going to keep taking shots and Dame is always a good large field tournament play on the road in Memphis feels tough, but, uh, certainly not going to argue with taking a large field shot on him. I just would rather play him beat or get up to something like that. If I was going to spend that much on the Memphis side, um, no one really stands out. Uh, if, if, if Desmond Bain is out again, um, I, I do think that John Morant is a really solid play here. Um, if if he's out again, I, I think that you can maybe talk about some Dylan Brooks's prices up. So probably not going to go there. Um, probably not going to get a lot of el else other than John Morant there. But I, I do think John Morant is, is firmly in play. Uh, just to keep in mind, they've had some, you know, mixing around with the rotations. Keep an eye out for Xavier Tillman to potentially start tonight. If Xavier Tillman starts, I think that we can definitely have some interest. And even still, I have, I have a little bit of interest in tournaments, but it's really going to depend. They've started Brandon Clark and people are like, oh, Brandon Clark's played well. Why wouldn't they keep starting? Well, they've lost every game, basically. So that's the answer. They've lost five out of seven, or seven out of eight, is it? I don't know exactly what the number is off the top of my head, but whatever, whatever they're doing, it doesn't matter if it's looking good for guys' stats. They've been struggling. So this is a game I'd like to have uh, some more clarity on later, hopefully with Desmond Bain and Danny Green. Uh, Danny Green just would eat up a few minutes. Not really going to make a big difference, but De Desmond Bain is a pretty significant uh, loss and Jaw is awesome without Bain. So this could be a, a game where I end up with Jaw. Uh, just depends a lot on what happens with Bain and where I want to spend my money. Jumping over to Brooklyn and Boston. It's going to be like, I, I know the price is high. I know we have other players in that range, but I am probably going to play Kyrie tonight. He's been, he's, first of all, even when it, with, when their team was fully healthy and other, you know, other situations and whatnot, he's had great, great games in Boston. 
Uh, knows a little bit of revenge there. Also, they need him to keep this game close. I do like Kyrie. The price is a little bit higher than obviously we want to pay, but he's mostly been pretty good for it. I know he barely got there against the Lakers the other day, but he, he's got there every other game that, uh, without KD. So I definitely have a little bit of interest there. I think I think Seth Curry and Royce O'Neal are both playable, but not priorities for me. And I think that uh, even Claxton deserves a look. But right now, the highest level of interest for me is Kyrie in this game. And on the other side, everyone just grades out to be fine, which means I'm probably just going to have to pass. If there was one guy maybe we could talk ourselves into, it would be a Jalen Brown, Al Horford, uh, Robert Williams, somebody like that. But nobody standing out to me at first look for those guys. Golden State at Minnesota. Uh, going to be curious to see what Golden State does here. Uh, I, I I really like – I really like uh, – like large field Curry unowned plays, but none of the high the high price guys are projected to be owned at all today. And we know Curry has like sort of a wider wider range. He doesn't, you know, he's not going to go out there and try and get fifty or sixty every night. It's just not who he is. Maybe in Madison Square Garden or something. But I, I think that I think that he's another interesting one, and it's sort of in the same realm as Jaw right now. Um, I have him, but so not a priority yet. But I just am always curious with Golden State because we tend to hear a lot about a uh, about a lot of midday downgrades for them. I'm fully on board with Andrew Wiggins. Um, I think that this price, he's back in Minnesota. Sign me up. I actually think I'm probably going to end up making him a core play as of right now. We don't have a lot of value yet. So he does stand out as being a really good price. And uh, the minutes should be better, should should keep should keep going up. And that you're playing in Minnesota, a good matchup, as well as, you know, former team drafted you, all that stuff. Um, so I do like him. And I think that Clay is a strong play as well. Clay's been shooting the ball pretty well. And uh, taking a lot of shots, just as importantly, and and you know it's a good matchup for Draymond and Poole as well. So all of these guys, I'm not going to argue with. My favorites being Wiggins and Thompson, and I think you could talk yourself into a game stack here uh, with something like a maybe a Wiggins, Thompson, and Draymond. Even you can go all three of them if you want to. Uh, on the other side, we have the always questionable these days, Rudy Gobert. I do like him in this matchup. They can also play him off the court a little bit, but they're not going to really sit him in a home game. So I'm kind of you know, fiddling around with what to do. My guess is he plays if he doesn't play. We have we have very easy things that we know what to do. We know to to play Kyle Anderson. We know to play Anthony Edwards even more. We know probably um probably want to get some exposure obviously to the uh to the automatic play Nas Reed if there's no Gobert. So this game becomes extremely stackable if there's no Gobert. With Gobert, uh I like Kyle Anderson a little bit. I like Jaden McDaniels a little bit and I like Edwards and Russell a little bit, but not as priorities at these prices. I do think Edwards has been, been worth the price. So uh, maybe some sticker shock, but I do, I, I think it's, I think you start firmly in play. And, and by the end of the day, this may be a game we want to stack. It just depends on what happens with the Q tags. And then if we hear anything from golden state, speaking of games that you could probably talk yourself into stacking, um, Everybody in this game, like, it, you know, it's a great matchup for both sides. So you have a really, really good game environment, which you have to give a, a, a like a little little bump to the whole game in general. I think Barnes and Herter are both solid plays here. And I don't usually like to play these guys on giant slates because the ceiling feels a little bit capped. I feel comfortable with it tonight. Um, they're both going to have some ownership, as you can see, at least as of early projections. And then, and then the Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox, you're never going to hear me argue, especially a good matchup. I think Sabonis might be better than a little, some of these other guys we've talked about, just in terms of like, is he going to get 55 most of the time here? I think so. But is the ceiling there? Yeah, the ceiling's there, but it's it's a little less likely than some of the other guys we've talked about at the, at the top tier price range. But 9,900 is also a little bit of a discount. So you have to sort of weigh that. I, I, I do think you want to play one of these Sacramento guys at least. Uh, Berter, uh, Barnes and Herter feel like the, the, the easy ones for, you know, semi-ish value on a value on a slate we don't have value for, but I'm guessing that value opens up a little bit later. Anyway, we'll jump, we'll keep moving on. Um, I'm going to have to pause this just for one second. We're going to, we're going to stop the share and we are going to pause and we'll get right back to it. Just in a second. Pause recording there, guys. We have, um, we were just finishing talking about Sacramento, where I think you're going to want pieces from this game in general. Uh, Barnes and Herder, while they stand out again, as I mentioned, not my usual, my favorite guys to play on full slate, but this is a good good enough matchup, and they're they're at a reasonable price. And we are currently starved a little bit for value, so there are two plays that look really good early on that may not look so great 
uh, later in the day. And uh, Keegan Murray deserves to be in that conversation. Also, I also think Fox and, and Sabonis are reasonable spend ups. Looking through San Antonio, we only really have the queue on Langford today. I, I am going to keep just taking shots on Sohan. I don't think this is like an, an auto play or anything like that, but I just, it's just sort of like what I believe in doing. I've been doing this since he was 3K. Uh, he's a really, really good player who I believe has a lot of their future. He's going to have some complete dead games where he looks terrible and and even maybe, maybe even that doesn't get run at certain points, but I really like him as of right now um, in general, just because I, I just think that you're getting – you're getting some some edge on on being ahead of, ahead of the curve for a guy who, in the very near future, especially with the lineup around him, is going to be a, you know a six k plus player. So I like that value and I like this matchup. Other than that, I'm sort of I, I'm usually the pass on Richardson guy. I'm open to it today. Uh, I do like Trey Jones, and I'm kind of you know a little confused. I know he's lost certain minutes in certain ways to, at different times, but there's been a lot of blowouts. So I think Trey Jones is another one who I, I think is a, is a fairly strong play today. Um, that's most of what I'm getting to from the other side. But again, as I mentioned, this game along with Golden State, Minnesota, very stackable if you want to go that direction. So I don't mind maybe reaching out to a few other pieces. Another game, speaking of stackable, we've got a lot of them today. Um, you've got Isaiah Joe projecting like crazy. He always does on the early projections. He always projects incredibly well. And uh, I like him if he's not going to be owned. I am not particularly interested in playing a chalky Isaiah Joe, but I am definitely going to have him in my pool. And at first look, like, I do think that he stands out as a potential value, but it really is just potential value. And, and we we don't know for sure. The guy I like is Jalen Williams. I think Jalen Williams actually could, you could argue, is a, is a priority play. Without Dort, he's been really good. And I think that uh, in this type of a matchup, the up and down and the no defense of Houston, Jalen Williams could really thrive. Um, not getting to Wiggins feels like a good troll spot, though, for him. Um, and I'm not getting to uh, Shea and Giddy at the moment, but I have zero argument with just literally every slate. You could just say one of Shea or Giddy, and I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. I think they're completely legitimate, especially in this kind of a matchup. To see Knicks, um, I'm going to have to do a little more digging and, and see how many minutes I really can can project him for. I would rather play Deshaun Tate, but I think that you're considering Tate, Knicks, Jabari Smith, all in the same range. Um, not, not, I mean, I don't mean the same price range, but all for the same reason. Value-ish plays with upside. That's the way I would describe it. So um, one of those three, I expect to have a game. I think that I'm leaning just on Tate at the moment. And then look, we, we can't deny what Shangun has done and he's done it. You know, he, he can destroy like anybody. This is a, one of the easiest matchups in basketball. He's 8,800. It does feel like sticker shock, but he's obviously proven that he's worth it. So I am going to, to can definitely consider some Shangun today. Toronto at Utah, this feels like a good spot to try to play one of the Toronto guys. It's hard to pick, pick which one. Um, I still feel like Van Vliet for his upside may be like under projected every day a little bit too much. But I would say one Toronto is, is probably good for me. Um, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's a up, pace up matchup. I, I, I do like Precious, but they did bump the price a little bit, making it a little more uncomfortable. I like Boucher always for large field tournaments. Um, Trent, I feel like maybe is getting a little too much love. That seems ridiculous. That's 17%. That's not going to hold. Um, Sc Scotty Barnes, Siakam, and Van Vliet, but particularly Barnes and Van Vliet. Siakam hasn't really had that big, big game in a while. Um, for the most part, with, with everybody, with, 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 with most of these guys back, he's not just not getting there quite, you know, quite enough. So not, not, I, I do like Siakam though, but I, I just think he's a little bit below the other two for me. Um, as for Utah, Jordan Clarkson's price is hard for me to ignore. Uh, I love playing him at these prices because he is a guy who can go out and get 50 in any game. So I do like Jordan Clarkson at first look. He is a guy I think I might have as a priority. Um, I really like them. You know, it's a tough matchup in general, but at home in Utah, like Clarkson has been, his numbers this year have been terrific. So I do like Clarkson quite a bit. The Beasley thing I'm considering, but probably going to pass because of just the sheer number of guards. I can I think Sexton's every bit as good of a play. So if you're going to consider both of them, I think maybe play Sexton at lower ownership. And then everybody else just rates to be fine. Um, Walker Kessler taking a chance, that's fine, but uh, really hard to hard to know. I actually don't want to take the core sign on, on Clarkson just yet. I want to do a little more digging before I do. 
But I do think this is a, you know, it's 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 not a great matchup, but it is a spot where Clarkson is just feels like a little too cheap, as do Beasley and Sexton. The problem is there's just too many guys at some point. So really picking him, picking, picking one of them is probably the right idea. And I'm going with Clarkson the most. Atlanta at Phoenix. Uh, we have Trey Young, who's probable officially tonight. Uh, gonna be completely unowned. Kind of, kind of a little interesting, not a great matchup, but. Mildly interested at the at the unknown version of uh, of Trey Young tonight. I think that John Collins is fine, but none of these guys stand out as being great plays. This is not my favorite game environment. I do think it's a big upgrade for Phoenix. So I think Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton are both really really solid plays. Um, and that's 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 pretty much where I'm. Oh, and, I'm sorry, and Cam Johnson. So I, I do like the matchups for this matchup for the Phoenix side. Um, and, and I, and I think those guys are all really strong. I think Cam Johnson is a guy I probably will, will end up on my priority list today, just especially if we don't get too much more value, which I'm guessing we're going to get some, but he is my favorite, uh, play in this game. And I, and I have no problem with Paul and Nathan also. Um, so that's, that's an early look of just my rundown of games of where we're at. Um, and I'm going to really quickly just highlight some of the, the things that I think you're doing, you can consider doing, I think getting a stack in, any of the five o'clock games, uh, the OKC Houston, San Antonio, Sacramento, Minnesota, Golden State is completely viable. I think the Portland, the Memphis game is really interesting. I think from an overall, this projected ownership on Barnes and and Herder, it just feels a little a little fishy. I like the idea of playing one of them. It feels kind of weird that they're the best value on the slate or, or that Barnes is the best value on the slate and Herder is pretty similar. I actually think I'd probably play Herder and over Barnes, but... They're certainly both in play. Um, the the C Knicks, none of this stuff looks great is my point. So unless we get better value to open up, I'm not going to be stars and scrubsing it, but we're probably going to get be better value because it's a huge slate. The real show is going to be at six with me and Sheets. Well, Sheets will be out today, but he might pop in to say hello during the show. But we'll go through everything we've got by then. So some big tournaments out there today, guys. I hope we could take some money, make some money. And uh, good luck to everybody out there. And uh, let's crush it, y'all.